Hey everybody, welcome. Oh. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm bringing you another end of the month garden update. It feels like I just did one of these. Granted, I did only post one video after my last garden update, but these months are just flying by. <laughs> Please make 2020 end already. There are a lot of new things happening on my balcony. I made a bunch of changes. So without further ado, let's get into the update. I still don't have a mic to film outside, so here's voiceover Jenny again. <laughs> Oh, hi there. Finn wants to join us on our garden tour today, although shortly after letting him outside, he began eating dirt out of one of my planters, so now he's forced to sit up here. He's lucky he's cute. As you can see, some things have been moved around, some things have completely disappeared, and some things are brand new. I harvested my dill, Swiss chard, cinnamon basil, sugar snap peas, and spinach, so you won't be seeing any of those guys in the tour. First, let's check it on the Thai basil. It's still going super strong, and all the plants are nice and bushy. As you can see here, I've been pinching off the flower buds to slow the bolting process so that I can get the plants to be a little bit more bushier before harvesting everything and turning it into some delicious pesto. Up next, we've got the cherry tomatoes. I know what you're thinking. Wait, weren't there three plants in that container? You're correct, but I did end up moving one of the plants into a different container so that all three plants would have enough room to grow. There are a few clusters of tomatoes which have reached a good size and will likely start to ripen soon. On these two plants, there aren't a ton of additional flowers, so I think these clusters are going to be all the fruit that I'm going to get from these guys. However, on the other plant, which I've moved into the old spinach container, there are a ton of flowers. There aren't as many fruits, but I'm hoping that since there are so many flowers, I'll be able to get a few more coming in soon. I also want to briefly talk about pruning your tomato plants, and this is something that I just started doing after watching Epic Gardening's video about it. Basically, to increase fruit production, you'll want to pluck off these things called suckers. So, what the heck is a sucker? Every tomato plant has its main stem with several branches that shoot out and then produce the leaves and fruits. However, sometimes in between the stem and the branches, these little baby branches will start to grow, and these are called suckers. Using your fingers or some sharp pruners, just pinch off the little suckers so that the plant can redirect its energy into the fruit instead of growing these little branches. In the same container, we have an army of green onions. These are all regrown from scraps, which shows how often I use green onions in cooking. If you want to learn all about regrowing your vegetable scraps, I have a video on that that I'll link if you want to check it out. The other green onions are still going strong. I cleaned up a lot of the dead husks just because it was a bit of an eyesore. And the flowers have almost completely dried out, so I can harvest the seeds very soon. In the other former spinach container, we have even more green onions that have been regrown from scraps. I planted these ones more recently because, as you can see, they aren't as big as the ones in the other container. And joining those guys, we have a little rat tail radish plant. As I mentioned in my previous update, one of the four plants was being completely overshadowed by the other plants, so I decided to move it into to another container so that everybody had enough growing space. When I first transplanted it, it was about this big, so you can see that it's grown quite a bit in just a matter of weeks. On that note, let's take a look at the other three rat tail radish plants. I think there's something different, but I can't put my finger on it. Oh yeah, we finally have flowers! Literally a few days after posting my last update where I mentioned that the plants needed to be a bit bigger before producing flowers, these things shot up and began blooming like crazy. There are a ton of little pods beginning to form, which is what you harvest from the plant to eat. A few pods didn't make it due to the heat, so that's why I moved the rat tail radishes where the sugar snap peas used to be. The shelf acts as a bit of a filter so that it prevents them from getting too much harsh sunlight. Also, the other day there was the tiniest little bee collecting pollen from the flowers. I wish I had gotten a picture because it was so small and so cute and it had so much pollen stuck to its little legs. Bees are just so great. The pods will be ready to harvest in about one and a half to two months, so stay tuned for that. Beside the rat tail radishes, we have some blades of grass. Just kidding, it's the garlic. I've moved the garlic out of its old pod because it was way too small and garlic needs a lot of space for its roots to spread out. This pot might also be too small for it, but it's the biggest one I've got, so I guess we'll just see what happens. Moving on to the shelf, let's talk about the pole beans. There are finally beans beginning to grow. I was a little worried that I was just going to get a bunch of foliage, which, don't get me wrong, they look very pretty, but I'm also glad that beans are coming in. A few weeks ago, a lot of the leaves began looking like this, with some of them turning completely yellow and others just completely dry. Dropping off. After some research, I learned that this was a sign of nutrient deficiency, plus they had also been experiencing a bit of heat stress. 
Unfortunately, I can't control the heat, but I did add some fertilizer. I just diluted one capful of this into my watering can. It's just a basic fertilizer that we use for our aero garden system. The nutrient levels are quite low, but I didn't want to go too heavy on the fertilizer, and turns out it was just enough to give the beans a bit of life and to actually start producing beans. As you can see, this is a spot where the leaves had completely fallen off, but now there's all this beautiful new green growth. On the bottom shelf, there are two new additions. These are the hot pepper plants that we started growing in our aero garden system, but they quickly became overshadowed by the other pepper plants, so we decided to let these guys grow outside. One of the plants has a bunch of peppers forming, and the other doesn't have anything, but it was the smallest of the two plants, so maybe it just needs a little bit more time. According to miracle Grow, they're called Purple Super Hots, which I'm convinced is not an actual name, but the peppers are supposed to look like this, so if anyone knows what they are, leave a comment down below. On the next shelf, the baby green onions aren't looking so babyish anymore. They're super long, and I'm probably going to have to move them since they're sticking out from the shelving unit. Here's the sensitive plant, which I still haven't gotten a pot for. It has also grown a lot, and I'll also have to move this one out as well because it's almost touching the shelf above it. A few weeks ago, I forgot to water it, and a bunch of the lower branches died, so I was worried that it was a total goner, but thankfully I was able to revive it, and now we have all this beautiful new growth. Also, because I know you want to see it, here's what happens when you touch the plant. Our strawberry plants are looking bushier than ever. Strawberry season is pretty much over now, but our plant is still producing a bit of fruit. It went dormant for a little bit, but it's trying its best to give us a few more berries. Since they are ever-bearing strawberries, I plan to insulate them over the winter so that hopefully they'll come back next year. Beside the strawberries is another new addition to the shelf. This is my very sad little citrus tree. I grew this guy from a grapefruit seed a few years ago, and it's seen its fair share of ups and downs over the years. It's constantly growing new leaves, then dropping them, and that's just because I don't live in a tropical climate. I keep this guy outside in the summer so that it has a chance to grow new leaves, but unfortunately it doesn't do too well inside during the winter because of the lack of sun and warmth. Either way, I refuse to give up on it, no matter how weird it looks. And finally, up top we have our bell pepper plants. I took a bunch of the bottom leaves off, not only so that the plant would redirect its energy into the peppers, but because this helps prevent any soil-borne diseases from taking over the plant. I forgot to show you earlier, but I also did the same thing to my tomato plants because those guys are super susceptible to disease. Basically, if there's anything wrong with your soil, the leaves can kind of act as a gateway for those diseases to then latch onto the actual plant, and nobody wants that. The left plant has a bunch of baby peppers growing, and the one on the right has this. If you follow me on Instagram, and if you're not, you totally should be, you might have seen me post this to my story. So I'm on my balcony doing some pruning and I'm also filming my uh, end of the month garden update and I was cleaning up some of my pepper plants and I noticed this big guy. How did I not notice this before? It was just like hiding behind all the leaves. I totally thought it was just a leaf and like part of my language, but holy shit, look at it. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm still so dumbfounded as to how I didn't notice that this pepper was growing. There's also another baby pepper growing on the same plant, but let's be real, this guy's the star of the show. So yeah, that's what happened during the month of July. Bye bye for now. So that concludes the July garden update. I'm starting to prep my fall garden now and I'm gonna have a video on that coming out very soon. Basically, I'm gonna be growing a bunch of cool weather crops such as radishes, beans, and a bunch of leafy greens. So I'm gonna be starting the seed germination process for that very soon. But more on that in the next video. Like and subscribe, I'll see you later. Bye.